Muhammad. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. By the Lord, that is your name. You will never share your glory with anybody. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God. That is your name. That is your name. You will never share your glory with any man. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God. That is your name. Angels are singing, you are worthy, oh Lord, oh Lord, you are worthy, oh Lord. Lord, we are saying, you are worthy, oh Lord, oh Lord, you are worthy, oh Lord, you are worthy, oh Lord, you are worthy, oh Lord. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Every morning, great is your faithfulness, O oh Lord. Great is your faithfulness. The steadfast Lord. Of our God never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Oh, every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Oh, Lord. Great is your faithfulness. Is your faithfulness great? Is your faithfulness morning by morning? New mercies I see. All that I need, your love has provided. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto us. Praise the Lord. The mercy of the Lord is new every morning, and great is faithfulness throughout all generations. We thank the Lord that we are alive, that we are called, among the living, to be called the children of God. What a privilege and a blessing that we are children of God. Amen. Father, we just say thank you. thank you. Let us pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father and our God, the one that made the heaven and the earth, the one that said, come unto me, all ye who labor and a heavy lady, I will give you rest. Father, we thank you for your word. We come to receive your rest, our Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says, there are many, therefore rest to the people of God. Father, we receive your rest. As we are about to study your word, Lord, we ask that the word we study, Lord, will be a blessing to us. And we study the word, retain it, practicalize it. The blessing inherent with those that study your word and obey it will be our portion, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Father, if there is any who have sinned against you, we ask you forgive us. Your word says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. If we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all righteousness. Father, we know we may have sinned against you in many ways. By what we say, by what we do, or faith to say, faith to do, and have mercy, forgive us. And let your blessing rest upon us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, 
We are going to Chronicles. We are going to start from Chronicles chapter 9, from verses 1 to 44. The topic is when God returned his people from exile. When God returned his people from exile. From chapter 1 to chapter 8 is all genealogy, but chapter 9 is the final chapter of genealogy. I just want to touch that. Then before we go to chapter 10. Chronicles, chapter 1 and 1 Chronicles and 2 Chronicles, they were all one book. They were written as one single piece of book. But because of the colonization of the Bible, it was breaking into different parts for easy assimilation and easy study. As we study the book of Chronicles, <clears throat> you may find yourself saying, oh, it seems, it seems we have studied this one before. Are we making a mistake? We have not. Whatever we see here is going to be what happened in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel and and a first king. It's like we're putting the book of Samuel. But why are we repeating the same thing? The Lord wants us to make sure we solidified the information. What caused the children of Israel to go to Ezra and to look at where they came from? You know, it is very easy for somebody to get lost. Very easy to get lost. In the world, I remember when I was coming to the United States in the 80s, after my family prayed for me, my dad called me. He said, come, I want to talk to you. We went back to the room. He said, let me tell you, don't forget where you come from. And that was still with me. He said, do not forget where you come from. That what tends to be carrying me to wherever I go that I'm always being drawn to where I came from, even to today. Because if you don't know where you come from, there is tendency for you to get lost, like the prodigal son. Today, people don't know where they came from. This world is not our home. We're not from this world. We're from another world. And that world will return back to that world. We are sent to this world as a worker to tell others about Jesus and to direct them to God and to expand the work of God on earth. And when our, work, when our work is ended, then we leave. So today we have to be very careful that we understand what caused the children of Israel to be sent to, to, be sent to Ezra. Now, when they get to Ezra, they learn one thing. These are the generation that came after those that went to Ezra because they that went to Ezra, some of them were killed, as we saw last week. Some of them were some of them died. A lot of bad things happened to some of them. But the remnant, look at the history. I say, hey, why are we here? We are more powerful than these people. We are better than them, even culturally. Oh, we know why we are here, because we disobey our God. We refuse to obey Him. And for that reason, we have to try to please Him, even in a foreign country. Paraventure, he will allow our enemies, those that hate us, to have mercy upon us and return back to our country. And that's exactly what happened. As they started serving the Lord, the Lord then promoted the king. The, the king that captured them and said, Hey, go back to Jerusalem. He gave the order, say, Go back to Jerusalem. And says us, the king says us, now gave the order, say, Let them go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple of the great God. And other kings that can say, give this order that they have to use my resources to build this temple. And anybody who refused to do that, the person will be put to death. He said, this war must be carried out with urgency. That means that we don't have to fight for any material things of this world. As long as we obey God, God knows how to bless us. He knows how to favor us in the midst of degradation and deprivation. If we obey the Lord, Everything that we have, everything in this world belongs to our God. He is the owner of the universe. And as his own children, all we have to do is to obey him, to do his will. That will be fine. Let us go to 1 Chronicles chapter 9, from verses 1. So all Israel was listed in the genealogical records 
in the book of the kings of Israel. Then the people of Judah were exiled to Babylon because they were unfaithful to the Lord. The first of the exiles to return to their property in their former towns were priests, Levites, the temple servant, and other Israelites. Some of the people from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh came and settled in Jerusalem. The question is, why does it have to be Judah or the priest that had to come first? You know, usually, if you want to build a foundation for any family, any nation, the first thing we should do is to have altar for God. To make sure you have an altar, a place where you worship God. Any man or woman who refuses to worship God, I don't care how educated they are, I don't care how rich they are, they are going to be poor sooner or later. But if you find a man or woman who had the fear for God, who put God first, look at that man, look at that man. They may be poor right now, but later on, the generation will rule this nation and the world, the nations of the world. So the, 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 the exile were very careful not to make the mistake of their grandparents and their predecessors and their parents before them. They say, okay, if we must go back to our own country, we have to make sure we are doing the right thing. Let us first of all send the priest, the Levite, those who are servants of God, to go and prepare the way so that when this Ezra will come now, they will have a place to worship God so that they will not offend God again and will cause God's wrath to fall upon them. God loves every one of us, as I always say. But the problem we have as a human being is that we don't love God. We don't love God. We love God if God is blessing us. But if God is not blessing us, then we don't love God. And I'm sad, it is sad to say that today's church is still about blessing, the physical blessing. We're not looking at spiritual blessing. If the man is stealing, he's cheating, he's doing bad things, all they are praying for, money, 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 money. No, it shouldn't be that way. People are seeking the gifts of God, but they're not seeking the face of God, and they're not seeking how to please God in their heart and in God's way. So they send these, these uh, people from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, Manasseh, and settled in Jerusalem. So Jerusalem was the main important city where the throne of God and the city of God is located. One family that returned was that of Uriah, Utah, son of Amihu, and son of Umri, son of Imri, and son of Bani, a descendant of Perez, son of Judah. So this family now, they are returning family by family, one after the other. Other return from the, the Shulite clan, including Asher, the oldest, and his sons, from the Zelophat clan, Joel returned with his relatives. In all, 690 families from the tribe of Judah returned. From the tribe of Benjamin came Salu, son of Mashul, son of Hadiva, son of Hashunat, and Ibina, son of Jutan, Eliam, son of Uzi, son of Imri, and Mesusalam, son of Shepha, son of Re, and son of Bejan. These men were all elders, were all leaders of clans, and they were listed in their generical record. In all, 956 families from the tribe of Benjamin returned. It is now showing us how many people returned and from which family they came from. Today, we may look at our, our life as individual. Our life is not individual. Whether we like it or not, a day is going to come. There are going to be a record of our life, of our children, how they are living. May God help us in Jesus' name. So the God is looking for every one of us to give our life to him, to serve him, to love him. Because whatever we are doing right now is going to affect our generation not yet born. It's going to affect them.
He said, Emily, go ahead and, and, and push your phone, please. So me go ahead and in Jesus' name. So we have to be very careful that we are doing God's will. So, verses 10, among the priests who returned were Judiah, Juharad, Jachin, Azariah, son of Hekanah, son of Methuselah, son of Zadok, son of Memerot, son of Ahitob. Azariah was the chief officer of the house of God. Other returning priests were Adiah, son of Jethro, son of Paso, son of Mekija, and Miss Masai, son of Adel, son of Jesure, and son of Mesal, son of Meluselat, Melusemit, son of Ima. In all, 1,760 priests returned. They were heads of clans, and they were able men. They were responsible for ministering at the house of God. You see, this priest has to make sure they come back to follow the order of God's institution. You know, today people are saying we have so many pastors. It is sad that we have so many pastors. A lot of pastors are not really pastors. Some of these so-called pastors are only really after their belly, the God of their bellies. It didn't just start today. Some 2,000 years ago, in the Act of Apostles, they were fighting over food. They call it table. Dividing of bread, money, not the way the church is built on today. The church was supposed to take care of the poor, the orphan, the widow, and those who cannot help themselves, the, the strangers. That was the, the goal. Then there was, a, there was a complaint brought to Peter. I said, Peter, our women are neglected. Our widows, they don't give them any gift. They don't give them any food. What are we going to do? Peter said, let us appoint capable men, able men, men who are wise, men who are intelligent, men who are spiritually sound, who have the fear of God. Let them be in charge of dividing the food. We are going to give ourselves to the word of God, to preaching, to teaching, and to exhorting people about the word of God. It is lucky today that it's not there. What people are after today is money. Every pastor wants to ride the private jet. They want to have the money. They don't care for the poor, the orphan, the widow. And they are making money from people. And that's not what's supposed to be. And it is very sad that if Jesus was to come to the earth today, he would be very sad. You never see where Jesus Christ was actually raised the offering. Or where he asked people for tithe. I have no one find, find it in the Bible. Rather, he took people said, give them food to eat when they were hungry. The disciples said, Lord, you must be a strange man from the town. You know where we are here? We're in the desert. There's no food. He said, I know. Give them something to eat. They're happy with me for three days. They'll be fasting. I can't send them away without food. That is someone who has a good heart. He said, I don't want them to go away. Otherwise, they're going to faint on the way. I need to give them food. He said, well, what do we have here? He told uh, Peter, Andrew. Andrew is Peter's senior brother. So they went out, they said, oh, we found a, a boy with just a little bit of lunch. He said, okay, bring it, that's fine. He said, Lord, this is nothing compared to the multitude here. We have a lot of thousands of people. What is this? He said, if we had to buy food of 200 pounds or 200 denarius, which was almost a year's salary, it's not going to be enough to feed these people. He said, but I know, don't worry, the little one you have, bring it. Say, let them see that. You must be looking at this man and say, this guy must be crazy. He said, now bring the food, he prays. Say, Father, bless this food. Let it be multiplied. That means everything you have, if you put it to God's hand, God can bless it. I don't care how small it is. I don't care about your education. I don't care about your job. Whatever you are doing, it doesn't matter. It is the blessing of God. Proverbs 10 22. Proverbs 20, Proverbs 10, 20 says, it is the blessing of God that makes you rich. Does not ask sorrow. You want God to bless you? Put your life into his hand. Allow God to use you and become a blessing in God's hand. So this, this priest were responsible for the house of God, for ministering at the house of God. The Levite who returned were Shemaiah, son of Hazu, Hazob, son of Azarekim, and son of Hashbiah, a descendant of memory. 
Baku Ka Hashli Galea Mantaya Son of Maika Son of Zuri Son of Asphor Obedia Son of Shemea Son of Gala Son of Jetum And Bekaya Son of Asa Son of Kana Who live in the area of Nato Feha The gatekeeper who returned were Shalom Aku, Tapmo, Ahima, and their relatives. Shalom was the chief gatekeeper. Period to this, they were responsible for the king's gate on the east side. These men served as gatekeeper for the camps of the Levite. Shalom was the son of Korah, a descendant of Basso, from the clan of Korah. He and his relatives the Koralites were responsible for guarding the entrance to the sanctuary, just as the ancestor had guarded the tabernacle in the camp of the Lord. Phinehas, son of Eleazar, had been in charge of the gatekeeper in earlier times, and the Lord had been with him. Later, Zechariah, son of Meshu Mela, was responsible for guiding the entrance to the tabernacle. In all, there were 212 gatekeepers in those days, and they were listed according to genealogies in their villages. David and Samuel the Seer had appointed their ancestors because they were reliable men. These gatekeeper and their descendants by their division were responsible for guiding the entrance to the house of the Lord when that house was a tent. The gatekeeper were stationed in all four sides, east, west, north, and south. Their relatives in the village came regularly to share their duty for the seven days period. So you see here that there were people, their responsibility was to guide the temple was to guide the gate. You know, when I look at the way churches are being run today, there are so many errors. We don't have guys, men on duty. We don't have gatekeeper. Anybody can just walk into a church when the pastor is preaching. Whenever I went to Nigeria, I see we're just, I'm talking, I'm, I'm only looking around everywhere. I had to tell the pastor, say, tell somebody to stay at the door. May he put to stay by the roadside. May somebody to stay at the fork corner of the door. When people have tried to enter, they have to make sure they don't just allow them to enter. If we don't take security seriously, we can be injured. Even in our homes, security should not be taken for granted. So these people were guarding the temple, even when it was a tent, seven days. So their family will come and guide them. And I was talking to somebody a couple of uh, days ago about Nigeria security. I said, we don't have security. Because somebody cannot just come from another town, another village, just come and stay in our town. We don't know who the guy is. And the guy is committing crime. We're not saying, is this guy saying, we can make sure that every village is secure. It is word by word, village, house by house. That way, every landlord has to make sure they know who they're renting their house to. If a stranger just comes from nowhere, then we cannot, cannot just rent him a house. It has to be a reference. And if he's going to stay in the bush, we have to smoke them out. If they are living in the forest, we go to the forest and put fire and make sure they don't stay there. We have to make sure we protect whatever we have. I say, but the way security is, we don't have security. And I happened to write, when I was in graduate school, a book on Cuba, the security system in Cuba. That was my, my topic that time, the book I wrote. And I could see how that country is well secure. The CIA, the FBI, the everybody tried to break that security system. They could not. So, you see, the children of Israel, they have a good security system. Even today, they cannot be able to penetrate through it. So, the children of God were very wise in able to keep the temple of God because the temple has so much goods there. They have gold, they have silver, they have so many articles of precious stone and goods. 
that if you don't protect it, people will come and stay there. So you have to put reliable men there, men who will not compromise, men who will be able to keep the security. You don't just put everybody to be a gatekeeper. If you do that, they can do a lot of terrible things. So in those days, when we're in Nigeria, I tried to get a security guard to guide her. I always say, I don't want a foreigner. I want somebody from my neighborhood there who can able to guide her because we know who the guy is. Somebody who is trustworthy, somebody who is reliable. Oh, the guy is from social player. I, say, eh, I don't want a foreigner. The, best, the people you should hire to be your gatekeeper are to be the gatekeeper of your house are the cook, the driver, the gate man, and all these people. If you don't hire anybody, you can combine your security and your life can be very dangerous. So God was very careful that he push, he, he take reliable men. Are, there, are you a reliable person? Are you a reliable man or woman, even in your place of work, at your home? Are you training your children to be reliable? The four chief gatekeepers, you see they have four gates. Each of the gates have their chief. It's not that you just have one, gate, one chief for the, whole, for the whole gate. They have four gates in the church, north, south, east, and west. Those four gates, each of them have a chief who coordinates the security system to make sure that the system is not broken down. And they have chief, assistant chief, and from there, people who guide there 24, they are there 24 hours. The family member will come and rotate with them, and they come and bring them food, and they are there. All Levi were trusted officials. These people were trusted, for they were responsible for the rooms and treasury at the house of God. They would spend the night around the house of God, since it was their duty to guide it and to open the gate every morning. Because people come to a church. There is gold people give, there is silver, there are cups, there are precious items they use for the worship of God. They have to make sure these things are preserved and protected. Some of the gatekeepers were assigned to care for the various articles used in worship. Within the, within the, the, the gatekeepers, they have different assignments. They check them in and out to avoid any loss, as I was telling you. They were responsible for the, furnish, for the furnish, furnishing the items in the sanctuary and the supply, such as choice flour, wine, olive oil, frankincense, and spices. But it was the priest who blended the spices, Mattia, a Levite, and the oldest son of Shalom, the Korite, was entrusted with baking the bread used in offering. And other members of the clan of Korah were in charge of preparing the bread to be set on the table each Sabbath day. The musicians were, prom were all prominent Levites, live at the temple. They were exempt from other responsibilities. They were on duty at all hours. All these men lived in Jerusalem. They were the heads of the Levite families and were listed as prominent leaders in their genealogical records. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You find that these men were trustworthy men. Everybody was given assignment. You know, when I was studying my management, when I was uh, in my undergraduate and graduate school, we were studying Genesis about Moses. They made it how to organize everything. You can see here, there's a breakdown of duty here, responsibility. Everybody has specialization. Everybody, God makes each person to be specialized. You know, the, you hear the word, master, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. So God wants to make sure that they are not jack of all trades. Everybody will have their own specialization, what they have to do. Today, most people just want to go to school. They just want to live life. They don't have no specialization. They don't have no nothing. They don't even know how to run their life. They're just living from hand to man, and other people are working. They don't know how to manage their money. And they don't want to learn either. They don't, if you try to teach them, oh, don't want to really learn it. And I was talking to a person the other time. This person buy an item. He said, oh, I cannot pay off the credit. I only just pay the minimum. I said, only just pay the minimum. I said, yes. I said, minimum. I said, yes. I said, you know what you're doing to yourself? He said, well, that's all. You just want me to pay. I said, no. If you cannot pay, don't buy if you, if you are paying minimum, your money is going to be triple by the time you finish paying it. 
and you will never be out of debt, but you are working more hours, but the money does not come to you. So I would rather suggest you work less hours and you don't buy all these things you don't need. So I wish I can do that. So you can do it. It's just a question of choice. So you find that God wants these people, those who were doing 24 hours job in the temple, they were not allowed to do any other thing. That was all their job. Everything they needed was provided for them. They had to eat in the temple because they were the musician and the security guards. They were the one that was guiding the temple. Brothers and sisters, we should learn from the word of God. Why do we study the word of God? To enlighten us. To make us to know the mind of God. What God expects us to do. What we are supposed to do. What we are not supposed to do. That is the essence of studying this Bible. We are not just studying because it's a historical record. It's a, it's a historical record that is fact. It is a culture of how people live in the past that make us to be happy or unhappy. And we have to make sure we don't avoid this, we don't repeat the same mistake they made so that the wrath of God will not fall upon us. May God help us in Jesus' name. Today, God is looking for men and women who will truly serve Him. Honest men, honest women who will put all their trust and confidence in Him. Are you among that person? Because God is looking for faithful men and faithful women. You see what we see here? See, this, this we are reliable men. Verses 20, 25, verses 35. Joel, the father of Gideon, lived in the town of Gideon. His wife's name was Micah, and his oldest son was named Abidon. Joel's older sons were Zo, Kish, Bel, Nan, Nadeb, and uh, Gideon, Ahio. It's a, it's a polar, try to meet your four. And uh, Zechariah and Milot. Milot was the father of Shemir. All these families lived near each other in Jerusalem. Na was the father of Kish. Kish was the father of Saul. And Saul was the father of Jonathan. Methuselah and Abinadab and Eshba. Jonathan was the father of Meribah. Meribah was the father of Micah. The son of Micah were Pihon, Melet, Tere, and Ahaza. Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Joad. Joad was the father of uh, Alimet, Azam, Azam Mavat, and Zimri. Zimri was the father of Musa. Musa was the father of Bene. Bene was, Bene's son was Raphael. Raphael's son was Elisa. Elisa's son were Azre. Azre had six sons, and whose name were Azukan, Bekru, Ishmael, Zerah, Obedia, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azra. May God bless the word in Jesus' name. There is a lesson here we need to learn. The lesson here is that each of this family, they live together. When I, when I was in England, there used to be a particular town, a particular part of the town where all the Jewish people live, Stanford Hill. All the Jews, they live together there. Then I, I sit down there, I discuss with them because uh, I like to have discussion with the Jewish people as a part of the family. And I sat down with them and said, why all of you live together here? They build houses together. From one house you can enter to the next house, to the next house, to the next house. They actually build the house together and they have a secret room. And when you open this door, you will move to the next door. They told me, say, well, brother, when we're in, uh, in Germany, we build houses far from each other. So when the Hitler was picking our brothers and sisters, we never knew what was going on because the story it was never it was never there. And uh, he said, but from that experience, we now learned that we had to build houses together. All of these houses they interlink. That from one house you can move to the end of the street. If somebody is trying to pursue you, if you think you are here, you will have to search the whole house. And before you tell you who are, the news is already out that you can escape to other part of the area because it's a very large neighborhood. All the houses are interlinked. So that was a very good lesson I learned from them. 
But it is very sad that among the African people, we like to run away from each other. We like to run away. But when my dad was growing up, I saw that my dad and his father and his and his and his brothers they built houses together. My 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 father and his brother they built a house together. It was a very big, large compound, and every other person had their own separate quarter there. And I asked my dad, I said, "Why did your father and his brother build a house together?" He said, "In those days, they used to kidnap people. The the evil that is going on did not just start today. They used to kidnap people. This is a full name." They're not just coming today. They have been there before. They will come and kidnap you. And they were kidnapping people. They were killing people. And they were, they were, they were raping women. And they were, they were stealing women. When women go to the market or go to the farm. He says, so to prevent somebody overwhelming you, the whole family had to build the house together as a way of protection. Oh, I say, okay. Then my father and his brother also built a house together with all this. And every other person, the whole village were almost the same one father. Our, our great-grandfather started the, the, little, uh, the village that became very great. And he has four sons. And these four sons, they all built house together. And I started researching. Why were they say Because to prevent people from getting lost. As children of God, we have to be close to each other. Spiritually, physically, and emotionally. But today's world is telling us to separate from each other. You know, I call some people. The person say, why are you calling me? What do you want? I say, what do you think I want? I am married, and I, I'm not asking for money. I'm just finding how you are doing. He say, why? I say, Pastor, I have I'm a shepherd of your soul. But the person doesn't understand what I was saying. As the children of God, we have to care for each other. I know we may not be seeing each other, but I see some people who are used to logging, but if they're not logging, I say call them, I say, what's going on? Why are you not coming? Why are you not logging in? He say, well, pastors, I'm working. I say, okay, you just have my prayer. So what am I trying to say? We have to make sure that this world will not get lost. The world is very terrible. Lots of people are dying. Lots of people are sick. Lots of people don't have jobs. And so many things are going on. I don't know wherever you are, Try to be close to each other. I know other people listen to this message around the world, in other parts of the world. As you listen, look for that Christian brothers, sisters. Try to encourage them. And even your family member, try to encourage them. Because this is very rough, brothers and sisters. Things are very tough, even in the United States in America. When you see people, how they are laying off for food. You say, wow, in this same country? Yes. But because we are exempted from this hardship, this degradation, this poverty, doesn't mean we should just fold our arm and think, well, it's not my business. We have to pray for each other. We have to encourage each other. We try to call each other. Although I know it's not possible because we are far away from each other, but I try as much as possible to call people every now and then. I'm just calling to see how you are doing. And just to greet you. It is very, very important that we care for each other. This is what the children of Israel were doing. They learned from a lesson. Each of the family they were living together. But because of the, the, the life we are living today, most people want to travel away from their parents. I've seen that in this country. I see other people, they, want, they are here in my area. They want to go far away from where their parents are. I say, why? Oh, I want to go to school. I say, people come from another state to come and attend school in my state, from another country. We have so many universities close to, our, to my place here. There are so many universities in Dallas, Fort Worth area here, in the United States of America. So why will you live here? I want to go to another place. People from that area are coming here. Sometimes people want to run away from responsibility so that people don't see what they are doing or where they are. If you are doing the right thing, there's no need to run. You can be close to your parents, may not be living in the same house, at least, let us see what you are doing. And uh, sometimes, some children just want to run away from their parents, thinking, well, I'm free. Freedom has a cost. There's nothing that is free. That's why people are, they want to run away from God. 
I see a lot of people come from to America, from Nigeria, from Africa. They say, I used to be a Christian when I was in Africa. I say, what happened? Well, I'm here right now uh, because of this. I say, brother, if you know Christ, you know him. You don't have to go to church to serve the Lord. You can read your Bible, you can live a holy life. You can serve the Lord with all faithfulness, all dedication. So, brothers and sisters, the Lord is calling every one of us. He's calling you and he's calling me. He's calling us to be a true believer. By the way we live, this world is very short. Life is very short, to be very frank. When I hear people are dying every day, there are no days that pass without somebody tell me somebody died. I say, wow, this is very interesting. People are dying. But we're exempted. We have to be very careful that our hands is in God's business. Brothers and sisters, we're the children of God. We must make sure we please the Lord by the way we live, by the way we act, by the way we behave. It is very easy to, to, to disobey God. I, I, I can tell you that. Very easy. But to please God is also very easy. That's why Jesus said, my body is easy. Psalm 19, my boy was reading this morning. He said, Lord, give me your princess. Keep me that grace to you to keep your word so that I will not have sin against you deliberately, deliberate sin. I will not sin against you. I will not, I will not disobey you. It's very easy to disobey God. But when you are disobeying God, you will not know you are disobeying God. May God help us in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, wherever you could tell us about Jesus, as I always say, our job is not the first thing. Although the job is good, I don't, don't misunderstand me. It's not the job. You know what is the first thing? Serving the Lord. Doing God's will. Reading your Bible. Telling us about, about Jesus. You know, a lot of people focus on, on their tithe, on their offering, on their money. No, that's not the first thing. The first thing is your heart. If you can, you can. But if you cannot, you are not committing sin. I always say that all the time. But we are brought up from a background whereby we say if you don't pay your tithe, you will not go to heaven. As I begin to read the Bible, I say that's not scriptural. That's not scriptural. Brothers and sisters, love the Lord with all of your heart. Try to read your Bible every day. I know sometimes it may not be easy to read, but try to read it. And try to make sure you do God's will. Try to show kindness to the next person you see on the street. And make sure you're not discouraged. Don't discourage yourself. I know sometimes life could be very challenging. It's not easy. Life could be very challenging. But don't discourage yourself. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. We are living in a country today whereby there are so many people who are doing contrary things and they think they hate us because of who we are. But we are saved. We are in the hand of God. And we ask God to beat our children and to give us the heart not to sin against God. In Jesus' name. Amen. If we don't sin against God, we are, we are fine. You see, the children of Israel, they went to foreign country. God sent them there because of their sin. And when they repented, what happened? The Lord uh, brought them back. And the Lord favored them. That means God can favor you. It's not about your beauty, your education, your experience, your height, your country of birth. No. God can favor you. And we're going to pray that God will send helper to our children. And God will send us helper. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. Do we have any prayer requests? Something you want us to pray for? Just thank you God for His grace each day. His grace continue to abide with us. So you have anything you want us to pray for? Any prayer requests? Okay. Let us pray. Yes, I have prayer requests, Pastor. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I want us to pray for uh, Pastor Masha to ask God to continue to give him strength to do the work he is doing. 
Amen. So any other prayer request? Okay. I have a prayer request for my niece, Juma, that God will give her her husband. By her birthday, she will find the bone of her bone. Amen. So we are praying for Yuma. Say, my wife said, Miss, that God will give her a husband and uh, give her the bone of her bone. Yes. So, wherever the husband is right now, we command you to come in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We decree by the power of the Lord God of heaven that made the heaven and the earth, that control the affairs of men and women, that will cause this. Husband of hers, wherever the man is, anywhere in the whole world, for them to meet each other by way of special design, by special arrangement, in the name of Jesus Christ. But I bless you for my life, according to Mr. Paula, that your grace be reached towards me, that you grant me your favor daily, and grant us favor to love you, to share you, to do your will, so that the blessing you have for us, because your word say, they that honor me, I will honor. But as we daily honor you, honor us, Lord God of Israel, in Jesus' name. So I pray for our brothers and sisters here. Every one of us present here today, Lord, we have one thing or the other that may be a burden to us, but we ask that you answer it, Lord, for us, in Jesus' name. Holy Father, if there's anyone we have seen against you as a family, as a group, as partners, where does you forgive us? Have mercy upon us and cleanse us from the hand of those that hate us. In the name of Jesus Christ. For you brought us to this country for a purpose. May that purpose never be defeated in Jesus' name. This country is yours, Lord. You are the landlord of this country. You are the king that owns this land. And because you own this land, where that the government of this country and those that make policy will make policies to favor us, Lord, in Jesus' name. This nation will bless us. We bless our children. We bless our husbands, our wives. All that pertain to us, all that related to us by blood, by marriage, by fellowship, by association, that this country will be a blessing to and the country you are will be a blessing to you and to your family in the name of Jesus Christ. For I will rebuke the hand of the evil one. We push back Satan's kingdom. Your word says, Whosoever God has blessed, nobody can bless them. For any man of God that wants to bless us, whether in the land, whether in the sea, whether in the air, by the powers of the risen Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, we use a blow with which Jesus conquered the world to destroy every contrary spirit that be assigned to trap us in Jesus' name. Wherever they have mentioned our name in a negative chamber, in the witch council's world, whether in the land, whether in the sea, whether in the air, we use the blood of Jesus Christ that is above all, the blood of Jesus, with which he redeemed the world, that that blood will redeem us from the hands of the evil one and from those that hate us in Jesus' name. Father, we have come to do your will. We have no powers of our own. Some trust in chariots, other trust in horses, some trust in talisman, some trust in their country, some trust in their money, some trust in their job, some trust in their education. But we trust in Jehovah God, the one that made the heaven and the earth. They want to give us all things to enjoy. Whether that God of Israel will be our reward and our children's reward in the name of Jesus Christ. For our sickness is a name. The Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. We command every knee to bow right now in Jesus' name. We push back Satan's kingdom. We rebuke the hand of the evil one in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for peace in the United States of America. That peace will reign in this land. In our time, in our generation, even up to a thousand generations, according to the world. And those that hate us, Lord, they begin to seek after God now. They begin to love God. They begin to love us in Jesus' name. The government will make policy, and the church in this country, Lord, will preach the truth indeed in Jesus' name. And they will never compromise again for one thing or the other. We pray for the president of this country, Joe Biden, and all those who are in government that you give them wisdom to rule this nation right, to make the policy that will bless us as your people, and to deliver us from the hands of evil one, from those that hate us, in the name of Jesus. And I pray for the pastors, who are pastors indeed, that they preach the truth, 
that they do your will and they obey you and they fear you so that you will not bring wrath and your judgment upon this nation in Jesus' name. For this is your country. Bless this nation, Lord God of Israel. Bless this nation for our sake and bless us in it. And wherever this world will be, will, be, will, be, will be shared all over the whole world, bless every man or woman that will listen to this world, that will practically, that will obey it, and let your blessing and favor rest upon us in Jesus' name. May the Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May we find favor with God and with man, and also we come in contact with in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Peace and love be with you, brothers and sisters. And also with you. Next week, same place, same time. Genos. God bless you, my dear. Lord, we want to sing your praises. And we are glad you came to save us. We can fly, you can swim the high. You came from heaven to earth to show us the way from the earth to the stars. I death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, we lift your name on high. Lord, we lift your name on high. Lord, we love to see your praise. We're so glad you reign in our bless you. Lord, we lift your name on high in Jesus' name. God bless you, brothers and sisters. We see, see you next week. Yeah, God bless you. Same place, same time. I shall finish with Janus. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.